In this video, I want to introduce parametric equations. Now, parametric equations are essentially two or more equations that define the variables in terms of a parameter, hence parameter parametric equations. Okay? So, what I mean by a parameter is uh, another variable. So, for example, you might have that x is equal to a function of t, and y is also a function of t. I won't write it f again, I'll write it as another function. So, x here is given in terms of t, and also y is given in terms of t. And what that means is that you could rela relate this back to a practical problem where x is changing with respect to time, for example, and y is changing with respect to time. So it might be a particle okay, that is flying about, okay, and the value of x, okay, how far along it is, and the value of y, how high it is, are both given by different functions, one uh, given by f and one by g. And subsequently, because you can have these two functions uh, that might be completely different, you can get all sorts of wacky and crazy looking curves from parametric equations that you could never have got from Cartesian. Okay, so what I mean by Cartesian is the regular old um, x squared plus y squared equals 1 or x equals y plus 3. I'll go through it in more detail in the coming video, but I just want to go and show you an example of this. So let's say that x is equal to t squared and y is equal to 2t. Okay, so we'll keep the um, functions pretty straightforward, but what you can see is that x is given as a function of t, so that's your f of t, and y is given as a function of uh, t as well, but it's a different function, so this could be g of t. And what we could then do is we could build up a table, okay, so let's say that these are the values of t that I am going to substitute in to x and y. And for each of these t's, I am going to get a pair of coordinates. So, when t is minus 2, x is equal to minus 2 squared, so 4. When t is minus 1, I'm going to get 1. When t is 0, I'll get 0. When t is 1, I'll get 1. And when t is 2, I'll get 4. Now, for y... I'll have two lots of minus 2, so minus 4, two lots of minus 1, so minus 2, two lots of 0, two lots of 1, two lots of 2. Okay? So I now have pairs of coordinates, which I can now plot on a graph. Okay, here's y and here's x. So my first coordinate that I have is 4 minus 4. So 4 along and 4 down. So that can be 4. That's minus 4. OK, that's my first point there. Then I've got 1 minus 2. So let's be somewhat accurate about this. So 1 and halfway can be about there. So 1 minus 2, so that could be there. OK. Then I've got 0, 0, so that point there. Then I've got 1, 2, so uh, let's try and get this relatively even. So 1, 2, so that would be there. And 4, 4, so somewhere around about there for 4, 4. OK? So here are my five points. And what we can see is that we have a curve that looks something like this. Oh, didn't draw that right. There we are. OK. So what we have is actually a parabola that is on its side. 
Okay, it's kind of like a, a y equals x squared, but this is more like x equals y squared. Okay, but what I want to get at is that we can relate the parametric equations back to Cartesian points, x, y points, and draw a curve of it. And the how you modify those two functions will change up that curve considerably. And it's well worth a little bit of time playing around on uh, uh, software like Autograph or Desmos and trying these out and seeing what crazy shapes you can come up with just choosing different functions for x and y. Okay?